Never let the perfect coop design intimidate or keep you from getting chickens. The most important thing is to just get started. I do have my dream chicken coop now, but it took me many years to get to this point. Our first flock of chickens was kept in a small two horse trailer and then later on got upgraded to a bigger horse trailer. And then after proving my love for chickens, my dad finally built me my first very simple chicken coop. It had a dirt floor, walls made of chicken coop wire and a few two by fours and a roof, but it was my first real coop and I loved it. But then many years later with the help from my dad and my grandpa, we built this coop, which is right here. But no matter which stage you are at, I want to go over what I believe are some of the most important elements of a chicken coop. And so whether you are going to build, buy, or add on to your current coop, you can incorporate some of these ideas. Hi, I'm Audrey, and I help passion-driven people trailblaze their way to a more self-sufficient life filled with happiness, plants, and chickens. Let's start with slanted tops on your boxes. This prevents the chickens from standing or roosting on top of the boxes, which means you're not constantly having to scrape off the chicken poop. The next thing is to make sure the boxes have a minimum size opening of 12 by 12 inches, but ideally 14 by 14 inches for larger breeds to fit more easily. You don't want your boxes too high off the ground because some breeds do not fly as well to get in and out. And so I like to have a step that is lower than the boxes like this one here, about one to two feet off the ground so hens can hop in and out of the boxes with ease. The next thing you might be wondering is how many boxes to have. Well, the funny thing is that chickens like to lay in the same box, sometimes even at the same time. But as a rule of thumb, you should plan on one box for every three to five hens and a minimum of two boxes if you have a small flock. The next important element to your coop is roosting space. Chickens instinctively want to roost in the highest area in the coop to keep away from predators. But like I mentioned with the nesting boxes, not all breeds can fly very high, and so I like to have a stair step or ladder type roost that the chickens can work their way up and down. It's also important to make sure that whatever you're using for roosts is at least one and a half to two inches wide so it's easy for the chickens to grip onto. And I also believe that wood is the best material to use because metal gets too hot and cold and plastic can be really slippery. Depending on how your coop is built, good ventilation is also really important. I have windows on each side of the coop, a back door that stays open. I also have vents way up top. And then in the summertime, when it's really hot, I prop open the front door and I put a piece of horse paneling there so then they get a good breeze from side to side. Now, as we make our way outside into the chicken yard, my first favorite feature is a large chicken feeder. This one here holds 150 pounds of food at a time. My next favorite feature is an automatic chicken waterer. But back to the feeder, I realize one this big is probably a little excessive for most chicken keepers but it is really nice to have feeders that can hold at least a week or two of food at a time. So it's one less thing for you to do on a daily basis. And now real quick, I'd like to go over the fact that I free feed. I know some are concerned with their chickens overeating and the cost of feed, but I have never found that to be true. I always keep really strict records of how much food I put out and how quickly they go through it. And it always works out to be the recommended amount of food that chickens need. The next feature I'd like to go a little bit more in depth on is the automatic chicken waterer. Of course, I still check on the water to make sure everything's working properly and I clean it out, but it is really a time saver not having to fill up a water every day or worry about the fact that maybe it got dumped over or they went through more water than you thought. You can see here I have oyster shell in its own container hanging off the ground, as well as grit right over here hanging in its own container. And that feature is nice because it just keeps the chickens from scratching it out and making a mess. A chicken dust bath is the next important element to a chicken coop. Chickens naturally fluff in the dirt, but I like to have a separate dust bath for them because then I fill it with diatomaceous earth or wood ash or even a combination of both because both of those ingredients kill pests. And so it's an easy way to keep your chickens free from mites or any other pests that might be infesting. Keeping predators out of your coop is the next important thing to keep in mind. I used to love free ranging my chickens but we had such a problem with coyotes, I had to quit letting them out. So when we built this coop, we completely enclosed the yard and then we buried sheet metal about a foot deep so that outside predators couldn't dig in. So my hope for you now is that you'll be able to implement some of these design tips into your coop, whether you plan on building, buying, or using something you already have, such as a dog kennel or gardening shed. Just remember that raising chickens is wonderful and so don't worry about everything being perfect. Just get started if you haven't already. And now if you would like to dive deeper into learning about raising chickens, I would love for you to head to this playlist right here 
where I cover all of the basics of chicken keeping.